we talk about the opportunities in CSA. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So, in this talk, I'll be talking about uh, uh, things like, uh, I mean, what all you need to get into CSA, then what all opportunities you have here, and what are the opportunities when you leave CSA. Okay. So, first of all, a disclaimer about this talk that uh, you know things keep on changing. Whatever uh, descriptions I'm going to give here, they keep on changing. So, just take this uh, procedures and eligibility criteria as guidelines. Yeah, and uh, you should do your own research before applying for admissions. Okay. Okay. So, first about uh, CSA. So, as you may or may not be knowing, it's uh, ranked among hundred uh, uh, departments in the world when it comes to computer science, and uh, it has I mean we have lots of publications uh, in top venues, uh, conferences, journals on a very regular basis, and uh, there are many books and papers uh, which are really highly cited, and uh, the, there is a major role which is played by ISC uh, when it comes to the Bangalore IT industry, which is like uh, uh, booming uh, these days. Okay, so many M Tech and PhD students are going uh, to very good companies, and uh, so basically that's where. Uh, ISC plays a role in the IT industry of Bangalore. Also, this uh, when you see the alumni network, like if you have alumni from your lab or someone, then they'll be ready to give you any kind of references which will help you in your future. And also, um, I mean, they're very uh, really willing to help. So that's a big advantage of people in CSA. Okay, so coming to the research at CSA. So first, uh, I would like to tell you that. Uh, uh, people here can go for internships uh, in foreign universities. So even if you are staying in India and you want to go abroad, there are lots of opportunities uh, that are given for internships in really good universities. Okay, then there are ample resources of all sorts, like computational resources, the faculty is good. Even around ISC, as you may have seen, like um, the Bangalore environment itself is quite good. And there are lots of malls and all. So, and... Uh, also, when it comes to guides and all, so uh, it's not necessary that you have to stick to one guide. Like, if you want to discuss uh, with someone from electrical department or even from physics or neuroscience department, uh, you can go there and uh, discuss, and you can have a uh, joint guidance from multiple guides. And there are several industrial collaborations. So even though it's a uh, CSA is supposed to be uh, a research environment, uh, we encourage uh, people to go to industries and collaborate with them. And also, there are uh, lots of fellowships, scholarships, and a lot of funding which is available. So you don't have to worry about when you have to go to uh, foreign uh, places for presenting your paper in conferences, there will be ample funding. And also, the, fellow, the scholarship itself is good. Like, uh, you will get 30,000 for uh, around 30,000 for PhD, uh, 13,000 for uh, MSc, and so on. OK. So, coming to some of the research groups which are there in uh, CSA, so one is uh, the theory group which works mainly on things like algorithms, graph theory and all. Uh, second is on systems which work on the core computer science coming to like uh, compilers, architecture, networks and so on. And the third group is intelligent systems which is like uh, the current trend like machine learning, game theory, data mining, uh, what all things you hear these days. Okay, so, and feel free to stop me, okay? So, coming to some programs uh, which you can enter into CSA. Uh, first is the PhD, which is like a prime program of CSA. Second is the MTech uh, research, which is like an MSc or uh, MS, which you can call uh, when you go abroad. Uh, these are MTech uh, courses, which are like uh, mainly course based. This MTech research is mainly a research project based, while these two are uh, course work based. And this is um, another opportunity for you is if you don't want to take admission, then you can still come for internship or project assistantship here. So you can just uh, work with some guide if uh, you don't want to commit to CSA. Uh, I mean, till now. So talking about some durations that you will spend at CSA if you get an admission here. So direct PhD is a PhD that I think most of you are eligible for like directly after a BTEC. So you don't, you don't need to do MTech for this. So it will take around four to six years. It again depends from person to person. 
second is a traditional PhD like after MTech you get it. So it generally takes three to five years. Uh, this MTech research is like MSc, it takes two to three years and this uh, traditional MTech program which is postdoc based is uh, for two years. Okay, now how to get into CSA, like you can get into MTech program which is coursework based. So here uh, it is uh, only a gate score based, like you have to give gate exam, get some good rank like within 50, all India rank 50 or 100 or something like that and then you will get admission in MTech. So it is a very competitive process. A uh, second is this uh, uh, PhD or this MTech research or also it was, it used to be called MSc. So there is a qualification exam uh, which is like gate is one of the exams so there are other qualification exams also. Uh, then once you qualify you come here give a written test on the day of your interview. So the written test will be based on your, uh, it will be very similar to gate exam itself. Uh, then you will have an interview on your preferred topic. So if you are going to apply for uh, a theoretical side you may be asked things on algorithms. If you want to apply for uh, a machine learning side you may be asked questions of probability and so on. Okay. Also there is an option if you are not able to give this exams for some reason or you do not want to give this exams, then you can simply come for project assistantship here and then after one year you can give an interview. So this uh, project assistantship, I uh, will let you know in further slides. Okay. So there is another program, a PhD ERP which is uh, for company people, so I, I guess it does not apply for you and also for uh, engineering college teachers. Uh, and so this program of project assistantship is what you can uh, try to apply for if you don't want to uh, go through the gate exam process. So here you can uh, go through the ongoing projects uh, in on the CSA website, go through uh, the professor web pages, you can see what are projects they are working on and then you can email the process professor that uh, you are keen on working on those projects and you, you can uh, give the resume to them. So and after this uh, if uh, after one year of working in these projects, if the professor really likes you or uh, I mean, he finds you interesting or hard working, then uh, you can uh, you can then yeah so you can then uh, give the interview okay in that lab, and then you'll be eligible for either uh, MTech in research or PhD. Okay, so what after PhD? I mean this is like some kind of a motivation why you should join PhD in the first place. So one is a uh, jobs with lot of freedom, like uh, this kind of jobs that uh, people get after PhD, uh, the kind of research jobs are there, they are like you can work from home, there are no obligations that you have to go to office or something, uh, just that there will be some deadlines before which you have to publish some papers, also the, those deadlines won't be like uh, a frequent deadline, they will be like um, long term deadlines like 3-4 months, okay. And the salaries will be excellent, you don't have to worry about salaries. Okay, then faculty positions in top universities like uh, IITs and IITs and all. So that is another option after PhD. A uh, third is uh, postdoctoral research positions in places like Harvard, MIT and those kind of things. So here, uh, I mean ISC PhD is considered uh, quite uh, recognized uh, in, in the entire world. So it's like you can apply for uh, postdoctoral research positions in good universities and also companies. Okay, and I mean again this career path is going to be a potentially great development, it is like a good starting point for you. Um, I mean if you go from BTEC directly there will be there will be some kind of a bar on you like you cannot go beyond that, something like that in most companies. So for PhD there is no bar like that, so you can just go to the companies and then uh, just um, proceed with uh, your work without worrying about any kind of uh, bar that is going to be put on you. Okay. Uh, what after MTech? So again the job profiles will be excellent, there won't be a kind of a research freedom as such but still the profiles will be much better than the BTEC profiles. In BTEC you will have a mostly coding job, uh, you will have little to think when it comes to the research aspect of it, I mean you will be thinking mainly from the algorithmic or coding point of view okay, in B after BTEC. And also the salaries in MTEC are much higher than, especially the MTEC in CSA, ISC those are much higher than the average salaries that you get uh, after BTEC uh, in other places. Okay. Uh, as I said again it is a much better career development, the bar will be higher but again it will not be as high as PhD. Uh, 
uh, then there will be great research experience background that will have after I'm taking CSA. Uh, the kind of projects that uh, CSA works on, it's like uh, they are mainly research based and people who are going to hire you will know that you have kind of a research potential and you will be given the kind of job profile of that kind. Okay. And then you have, um, if you want to apply for PhD abroad, then again CSA at ISC, um, sorry, MTech at CSA is a very good uh, starting point for such kind of PhDs. Okay, so now that I have kind of motivated you, hopefully you are motivated for uh, this PhD and MTech programs, then whether to go for ISC or IIT or any other places. So my first point is, um, the projects in ISC are given uh, prime importance. Like uh, you will be have, having a lot of time for working on your projects and that's what uh, most companies and universities look for. And also the course work here is quite intense. So it's not that uh, we kind of sacrifice or compromise the course work for projects. Uh, also there is a high probability of publishing research papers during your course here. Then there is, uh, again there are advantages while applying to other universities over uh, against if you do in IIT so there are like, uh, you will get good references from here, like the professors here are very influential. So if they give you good recommendation, you are going to kind of get it anywhere in the world almost. And it's uh, quite well known that I see the best research, research institute in India. In India. Okay. okay, now coming to ISC or abroad, I mean, uh, now we have an option of going for MS, MBA and many other options. So what you should really do? So again, as I said, uh, ISC CSC is ranked among top 100. So it's, uh, yeah. So it's like, um, if you are getting really good universities in US, I think you should go there. But if you are getting an average university, then I think you should try for ISC because it, most likely they are going to be below ISC, okay? Then the duration of uh, PhD is lower in India than that in US. So in US, uh, what happens is, the TA and RA projects which are there, they are not quite aligned with your thesis. So you kind of spend, end up spending a lot of time on that. Uh, in ISC, we ensure that all these projects are aligned in, uh, with your thesis. Okay. So that's one advantage. In Europe, that's not the case. In Europe, uh, it's kind of they compromise on coursework. But again, I mean, there are advantages of this, uh, like uh, there'll be a broader uh, research uh, perspective when you do TA and RA projects which are not aligned. So there are both advantages and disadvantages. And uh, the last point is uh, you can stay in India. So it can be seen as advantage or disadvantage depending on you. Okay. So you may want, you may have got, got bored with India and want to go abroad. Okay. okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to say. If you have more doubts, uh, you can visit uh, the lab website. You can uh, visit individual lab pages, web, uh, web pages or professor pages. If you want to see what all projects you want to work on or apply for internships here. Or, uh, yeah, you can even email or talk to current students if you have further doubts. Okay, so one thing, it's uh, it may be a slightly controversial thing. It's kind of a takeaway from the summer school. So what most professors want uh, is uh, for you to go for higher education, okay? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be put a lot of, uh, it's going to put a lot of bar uh, if you just uh, go for jobs after B.Tech, okay? So later... Uh, many people think that it's going to be, it's going to be a, I mean, it would have been better if they would have gone for at least some tech. So it's better that uh, you think in the direction that way now itself. Okay. Okay, and uh, yeah, all the best for you and hope that kind of all of you join CSA. You have any doubts? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, you will have one primary department where you will be doing your PhD and you can have uh, guides from other departments. So that's what he must be doing. So you can have uh, multiple guides from all sorts of departments. Any other question? Okay, so if that's all then, okay, all the best.
Hope you enjoyed the summer school.